from downtown LA. Um, yeah, and his poetry collection, The Flood, is also at the register, along with some Hapa business cards I did. But yeah, please welcome Chiwan Choi. Not only my first book is my best book, <laughs> but I'll be reading two poems from my uh, new collection called Abduction. It's a collection I started um, after a miscarriage my wife and I had, and I decided it wasn't a miscarriage, it was an alien abduction. <laughs> um, so it fits Bunker. I don't know if everything they told me is true about statues carved in stone that blinked in the Chilean sun, about grandfather's deal with the Russians to save the family as the communists came. These are questions I allowed myself to forget in 99, soon after mom asked me what she should do about the tumor in her stomach. It's a Monday for all of us, sons, fathers, street sweepers, to forgotten things on the pavement, a box of books, most of them intact on 7th Street. They only taught me what we're given them, this ability to spill inward, to hold our blood inside us in bowls made from hollow trees until the weight of what survives us gives us comfort. He, my mother too, wanted me to learn to keep my eyes on the ending, to call death by a familiar name, giving me God so I can embrace it. How she, my father also, held me until I was able to release these poems that cannot save us, to whistle down the street on the intermittent yellow paint in the center, to the fire, to skeletons of ancestors, to the disappearing shadows of a neighbor that stood thinking, to the glory of these things we have not known. It's Monday, but how can I speak of the sky, a blue that isn't blue, when we are in the, Korea, in the basement food court of a Koreatown mall, eating, eating spicy burnt rice from stone bowls, sitting in these end of days in this bunker beneath the world we have fought to love, as he keeps himself from smiling at me, a bunker that will not hold forever, but long enough for her to drop seaweed on my food with her wooden chopsticks, long enough for me to protest. This piece is called Reconstructing Siberia. Because this is after the apocalypse, there will be a survivor, first alone, crawling out from a fallen edifice, jeans torn around the right knee. He will hear it, some noise that connects to a memory he can't quite identify, not because he doesn't remember, but because he has yet to learn how to place it among the ruins at his feet. The sky above him will be angry. That is how the sky is described around the time of Armageddon. And when he looks up at all that gray, at all that anger above him, it will be his father, the man's left thumb wrapped in silver duct tape, holding together the piece he cut off with a small saw. But it will be okay. There will be a new tribe that finds him, and they will offer him a coat taken from the dead. And one of them will say that it would have been better if he never woken up, as, he rests, as the rest take turns putting their hands on each other's shoulders for comfort. There will be rain. There will be metal signs dangling and creaking above doors that no longer exist. There will be the ash. The ash will be there. The ash that covers their skin until it tastes like family, until it tastes like holidays, until it tightens around skin and veins. And he, the one sole survivor, will remember how he gave tours of Los Angeles, the city where his grandfather was born where his father pointed at the street signs, telling him as he rode shotgun next to his old man, staring at the length of his finger, how it curved sideways. There will be a bus, a shorty school bus, and the engine will turn over on the third try, and he will tell them to get in. This is his city. This is his home. And he will begin speaking about the gold rush and the battle for water and how the streets burned before one April long ago. And when he sees the plaque engraved with I am Van Nuys, he will smile, let them know they're in downtown. He will take them on a tour. He will take them on a journey.
tell them a story about how the LA River, how it wasn't a river at all. At that time, sitting on the edge with his grandfather, as they all waited for him to die, how that was real. And at night, he will make love to the one that is even younger than himself, the one that mistakes hopelessness for love. And after the apocalypse, there's always an epiphany, one where our survivor discovers he has a special power. And it will be one that goes with what he used to do, tell stories of remnants and other inanimate objects. And he will be afraid when he discovers that he has the power to rebuild it all. And he will keep it to himself until he lets it slip from another night of sex. And they will want him, they will want him to use it, this power, to rebuild their lives. They will show him pictures of their yellow painted houses and the park with the lake and the coffee shop with the perfect ginger scones and the high rises and the walk of fame and the ferris wheel on santa monica pier and the green langer sign on 7th street he will do it all he will make it all rise from the ground and at night he will stay awake unable to sleep he will grab the key to that short bus and drive east and he will stop when he is there and he will build the emergency room at the county and he will place chairs and he will sit in one for 14 hours mm -hmm. until he can go in the back and he will watch it again how he loses his daughter how his wife tried to smile by turning her head toward her right shoulder how he couldn't stop thinking that the doctor looked younger than him and thought of that day mm -hmm. she and he moved here how they sat at a cafe on fairfax as the sun went down and she shivered and said this was the coldest city in the world and he will get in the bus again sit still notice his fingers wrapped around the steering wheel and tell himself this is grace this is grace, this is mercy. The bricks, the mortar, the walls, the ceiling. This is grace, the room, the house, the embrace. This is mercy, the sink, the slippers, the shelves. God as objects, salvation as pain. The end as the start, an intersection that no longer exists. Death that he holds on to, like the warm fabric of his father's work pants, clutched tight in his small hand as he once fell asleep standing on a crowded bus. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, our next reader, who I just met and is really cool, <laughs> is Bill Gong. He worked as a customer service rep, janitor, and butcher before working in software development for 15 years. And now he's unemployed. ThickBlackFrame.com is where he could find it. Bill Gong. <laughs> 